Is that Exo Force? Why, yes, Daniel, it is. Oh, you just got me very excited. Two? Today we're going to be talking about a, uh, a review and a little bit of history about Exo Force. Now, for those of you who are, shall we say, younger, or perhaps in my case especially, this was during your dark age. Exo Force was a theme that had come out around 2006. This was the first of what Lego calls Big Bang the uh, themes. Now think of Big Bang, uh, Ninjago being one, uh, Chima, yes, remarkably, was actually one such, and more recently, Nexo Knights. These are themes that Lego had integrated not only as a broad-reaching um, story-driven IP, but was also one that was supposed to incorporate a huge uh, media presence as well, not only with its own media. Uh, in ExoForce's specific case, there was actually a series of uh, manga-like short stories um, and some videos, uh, what's the term? Short videos, basically, that talked about it, as well as an interactive video game and a few other different uh, media campaigns and stuff around just to sort of hype it up. Um, we've seen it with Ninjago, most recently with the Lego Ninjago movie. So shout out to those of you who watched that with us Friday evening. Yesterday. That's right, that was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yes. Um, and then, of course, with uh, Nexo Nights, more uh, going back a little bit of ways, there was also the TV show that was incorporated with it. Um, but Exo Force was the first. And to give a little bit of history about this before we get into the review itself, just so that you understand the context, um, Exo Force was developed at a very strange time for LEGO. LEGO at this point was just starting to really get out of its own crisis um, in the early 2000s that saw the company on the brink of collapse. It was helped along um, mostly on the strength of just a handful of IPs. First and foremost, Star Wars. So, you know, say what you will about licensing, but it helped save the company, as well as one of the few in house IPs that it had that was doing very, very well, which was Bionicle. And again, say what you will about Bionicle, it was hugely influential for a time. So Lego, in their infinite wisdom, such as it were, wanted to develop an in-house IP that was going to be something completely new and really sort of capture um, a whole new genre as well as a whole new audience, something that would be fresh and, and interesting. And what they chose was a theme that was very closely related to uh, Japanese anime style themes. Uh, Exo Force in particular draws a lot of inspiration from themes such as Mobile Suit Gundam and Robotech in particular. Um, although the story, which I'll get to in just a moment, uh, is very matrixy undertones. Um, so, which leads me to the story. Uh, basically, Exo Force takes place in a world uh, called Sentai Mountain. And there were two competing factions. There was the humans, and by extension, their protectors, known as the Exo Force, and the bad guys, who were known as, <clears throat> excuse me, as, hold on, I have to remember the name of the, what is this? Um, well, they're basically just robots. And they were led by a robot leader called Mecha-1. Essentially, there was a robot uprising, and they inhabited one half of Sentai Mountain and the humans the other half, and they would fight each other for dominance. I again, very Matrix-y undertones. Um, the robots themselves had various different types of functions. They were initially designed by one of the antagonists of the story, whose name is Sensei Kaiken, who, as you can imagine, is sort of a prototypical Sensei Wu. Um, 
Sensei Kaiken originally developed them for labor duty, so they were kind of like mining robots. They later developed a combat version known as the Devastators, and then their leader, um, <clears throat> who was Mecha One. I'm sorry, I have to reference some of these names because I myself was not really too privy to this. On the other side, we have the Exo Force, which were again the prototypical version of the uh, Ninjago Ninjas. And in today's set, we are going to be taking a look at this right here. Set 8107, Fence of the Golden, or Fight for the Golden Tower, excuse me. Um, this set went new, came out in 2007. It retailed for about $59.99 in then year dollars um, and contained remarkably only two minifigures, but they are relatively interesting unto themselves. Um, the theme itself had mostly male protagonists for the most part. And again, in the modern sense, when we think of some of the other um, Big Bang themes that have existed, as well as some of what Lego has done with um, female inclusion and diversity, this is a little bit dated. Um, so keep that in mind. But this was the only set that had that female protagonist, which is the name of Kitomi, as you can see here. She was the granddaughter of Sensei Kai Ken. And this particular set revolves around a story arc that was them going to a place called the Golden City for whatever purpose. It was not relevant here. And in that story arc, Sensei Kai Ken was captured by Mecha One and the evil robots. And in an effort to go save him, they left Hitomi, who at this point had not really been uh, allowed to be part of the Exo Force, was left in charge to defend the city. So this is what that set represents. And this is the set. So the set consists of two primary parts. We first have the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is we have the bad guy vehicle here. Um, and you can see that this is, given, again, the context of being a mid-2000 set, there's surprisingly a lot of detail and not a lot of detail in these, um, again, to be expected. But there are some unique play features here. The set is, as you can see here, uh, designed to be held just like this. So the children do have the ability to use it as a plate feature and also it will have a shooting function as well both one and two triggers um, the nice thing about these is that you do get a lot of these large uh, blasters with it as well and they are colored in red which is something we don't see anymore so you again if you were willing to pick a set like this up you do get a lot of color uh, palette options that just aren't around anymore, which is pretty cool. The set you can definitely see is trying to go for simultaneously a very industrial um, mecha style look, but also at the same time somewhat skeletal. This is definitely a set that was built 15 years ago. The types of functionality that you get with it, the types of building techniques are not as advanced as you would see elsewhere. Uh, a good case in point in my own estimation is the fact that you do have a spinning feature for these large wheels here, and these are kind of like turbines, if you will. Uh, they do spin independently just from the use of this small gear here. And while the functionality is very good and, and adds a little bit of fun, you would expect that in a modern set, something like this might be trigger actuated or they could spin simultaneously uh, through a more complex gearing system. But regardless, for the play features of the time, this is actually kind of an interesting little um, vehicle. The later version that came out with Ninjago and Jay's Lightning Mech does have that trigger functionality. Exactly. And I should, I should note that, yes, in a lot of ways, this was prototypically the kind of things that Ninjago would eventually develop. Um, Ninjago ultimately came out about three or four years after 
uh, ExoForce had gone away. ExoForce only lasted for two years, went away in 2018. And Ninjago, or excuse me, 2008, sorry. <laughs> um, and Ninjago came around in about 2011. So they were not in one right after the other, but they certainly learned some lessons. Now, this is piloted by uh, one of these robot antagonists called a Devastator. And notice these very, very unique parts and elements going on here. Also, for you parts nerds out there, if you ever wondered why this is called, this particular piece right here is called a bad robot arm, well, now you know why. It actually was for a bad robot. Bad robot. Yes. So the bad robots, um, otherwise known as the Devastators, were essentially combat robots. Uh, the original versions were, again, meant for labor, for mining duties. And the in-story um, explanation for these guys were that they were sort of a Mark II version, not as chunky or as um, basically not as limited in its functionality as the original robots. They were specifically designed for combat. They were smarter, they were faster, they were deadlier, essentially. And in the sets, these guys come in a variety of different colors. Mecha 1 was essentially a gold and black version of this, which had the, at the time, uh, the sort of modeled, um, excuse me, modeled coloration that you actually see in these turbines here. You'll notice that they are silver and black as well. Oops, sorry. Let me get a better view of that. And you can see it just barely. Some rather interesting modeled coloration there. Representing the good guys is the aforementioned Hitomi. Now, one of the things that a lot of people find really striking about the Exo Force characters was the judicious use of those anime tropes as evidenced by the face. Um, usually they're very, very exaggerated anime style faces, as you can see. This being the only female character, she has a rather striking um, purple uh, torso with gold armor plating. She is a dual printed head, angry and serene. And then they have these uh, fun anime style uh, hair pieces as well. Uh, which are actually a rubberized plastic. This is not the hard plastic that you would expect. So for those of you who are familiar with some of the earlier minifigure series, same basic idea. One fun thing about these characters, and that is just a fun little aside, is that for the longest time, Takashi, who came in this set, has green hair. Uh, one thing that people would use the green hair a lot of was to make vegetables, and in particular lettuce in a garden, because until we got certain types of uh, parts later on down the line, that was really the only way you can do that. So this particular piece is kind of sought after and difficult to find nowadays. So this is the Golden Tower. And as you can see, it's a very skeletal, quasi-futuristic looking structure. Um, that is designed mainly as a play set and has some different play features in it. The tower consists of three levels, with the first level having a, <clears throat> excuse me, having a sort of gate feature, if you will, that folds back and forward based off of this lever here. Unfortunately, I, uh, oh boy, I kind of got it stuck in there. Um, but if you fold it down, there's a couple of random missiles, which I should be able to get at here. Also, please note, I did not put the stickers on this, but I'll show those in just a moment, just for example. So you have a couple of small missiles that are attached to the back side of this. So the idea is the gate flips down. It's, they don't actually function, but they're there. Kind of a neat aside. This is the safe. It's a standard mailbox type unit that fits on just a large plinth in the center of the first floor here. This floor is designed, if I can show you, there we go. 
This floor is designed to, if you were to hit this section, let's see if I can get it closer. If you were to hit this, it will pop down and the safe will go flying. Now inside the safe, there is a one by two yellow tile with a code on it. Uh, people have seen this kind of stuff before. These codes were part of the online game. I'll show it again so people can get a better look at it. I know it's kind of difficult to see. We can post pictures later. Yes, we absolutely can. The code was used for the online game and to access some other fun things as well. Um, but as you can see, there was a story behind the destruction of the tower. The second tier has a single blowout panel which you can activate just, well, actually it also comes apart, but it's probably a better idea. Um, it just fits in. This has a blowout panel, like so. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, interestingly enough, there is a lot of early sideways building techniques in here. There's actually very little sideways building going on. Again, mid 2000 set, you're still getting a lot of stacking, but the fact that they're using these Technic pins here to create this style is, I found quite interesting because again, this was pre the sort of one by one snoop bricks that we might expect or would think that would be used for this. Uh, there's a console in the back and there's not really much else to show. The top floor contains this stud shooter on a rotating ball joint. This is a bionicle joint here and can slide. Uh, Did you just shoot my computer? Right. It may have shot, yes. Oh my God. And is just there to defend against the robots. Uh, one other interesting note, and speaking of sideways build, is that there's a judicious amount of technic that's also used in this set, um, but not really for structural components like we would expect nowadays. Um, this vehicle, as you can imagine, does have a, some Technic underpinnings in it. But this, they use the Technic in a more creative way. Again, lacking the, <clears throat> excuse me, the sideways um, bricks or the snot style building techniques that we would have before, they had used these concentric Technic rings made out of a combination of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what's that word? Which one? These parts here, I can't, I'm drawing a blank. It's a Technic connector. Technic connector. Connect the angle connectors angle and connector. cross axles to allow to create this shape. They also allow for these pieces to be fit on. Whereas you can see, these are the old style blocks with the, uh, these guys with the ratcheting it's just a hinge brick. Yeah. yeah, and they are fit on with this connector here. So again, might be a bit of a convoluted way to our modern eyes of creating a sideways build technique, but to get the point across of a sort of Asian style pagoda type building, it actually, excuse me, it actually works pretty well and does make for a fun little playset. Now, overall, this set is not the most exciting thing in the world, but if you were a kid growing up in the mid 2000s, you know, this was probably pretty cool. Again, I, I have to reiterate that this was during my dark ages. I never knew about Exo Force until way later. Um, so, given my own opinions of what this set is, I was pleasantly surprised. While, yes, there is some datedness about the set, both in the source material and with some of these design techniques. As a set in taking an isolation of itself, there are some pretty clever designs and there's a variety of interesting parts here. And in a lot of cases, parts that simply aren't available in these colors. Most notably, you have these red or dark red style uh, elongated corner yeah. bricks, yeah, slopes that are uh, just not in production anymore. These are very, very nice. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool about it was the stickers. Now, I, again, have not put the stickers on, but just to give you an idea, 
they did go with a very anime style inspired sticker sheet. I do find it unique that they actually had actual writing and then they had the translation so you knew what to put on where and what meant what. Uh, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, but do those center symbols look very similar to some Ninjago which related one? writing? Which, which symbol? Like this one here, that one there where it's got that that like B shape with the line down. I've seen, I feel like I've seen that one in Ninjago. Mm. No, I think that might actually be like actual Japanese or might be something that looks like it. Ninjago, after the movie, they made up their own actual writing and language yeah. um, for it. So I, they've come out with a lot of different prints for that. But uh, I don't think that's... Um, that doesn't really remind me of anything. Yeah. So, overall, as a theme, it's actually quite interesting. Um, and if you would like to learn more about the history of uh, Exo Force, I highly recommend uh, trying to seek out the March 2017 edition of Blocks Magazine, which had a huge expose on the origins and development, as well as the sort of epilogue and legacy of Exo Force. It's definitely worth a read. Um, fun fact was that just before they launched the theme, it actually wasn't going to be called Exo Force. The working title was Battle Peak for the longest time. And then at the last minute, they changed it from Battle Peak to Exo Force. So here we are. So again, in taking in consideration of itself, it's not a bad set. Exo Force is a pretty interesting theme. There's a lot to like here. If you like mechs, if you like this sort of place and style, or even if you just like the parts, Exo Force might not be a bad pickup for people who are just into that. And if you are certainly something of a Lego nostalgia type, uh, like myself, these are actually fun sets to pick up. This particular set, as I mentioned, retailed for $59.99 and then near dollars. Right now, the going rate on Bricklink is between 80 and 90 bucks. And whilst I will be honest, I paid a little more towards the high end of that, I actually kind of like it. And um, definitely would put me in mind to potentially build something else or continue uh, acquiring more ExoForce products. For you collectors out there, prices on these sets are going to vary quite a bit. Uh, as you can imagine, because this did not have the best legacy, um, these sets were not that sought after. And for the most part, the sets themselves can be had at reasonable prices. But I would say that there are ones that definitely command uh, more premiums than others. Case in point, going back to my Takashi here, 8102. This is one of the Golden Box Edition um, versions. And while this is a relatively small set, in fact, only, where is it, 162 pieces, as a matter of fact, uh, this actually does command a bit of a premium. Last I checked, this thing goes for about 40 to $50 on Bricklink. It may have fluctuated since then. But overall, um, it's pretty interesting to see. So I hope you guys like this throwback review. Obviously, if you have any questions or want to see the, the pictures, I promise we will have pictures of it. Um, overall, it was a pleasant surprise. I would say that this is something I don't know if I'm ever really going to uh, keep together. This may be just a parter. Um, and like I said, if you do decide to ever do that with them, you can't go wrong. There's a lot of great parts in these sets. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoy.